Hi everyone, this is a little bit of mommy advice. Um, today's video of advice will be about having a c-section and my guest today is baby Ethan. Uh. Oh! Sheesh! You don't want to be in the video? Okay, so I have had three c-sections. Um, my first one was because Kayla was breech at the time that my water broke. So uh, we had an immediate c-section and I wanted to originally have a natural childbirth free from any medications and interventions and just as natural as possible. I didn't even want an IV. The, those were my directions and I wanted to have her at a birthing center. But, you know, sometimes things happen out of our control. And the first advice I would give to uh, parents who are about to deliver is to understand that you are not in control of this situation. And if you have faith in God, you will know that he is working things out for your good. So you just have to trust God in all situations. So when I found out that I was to have the C-section, it, it all happened very, very quickly. So I just went to prayer. And I can remember um, what they do. And I'll just, in the case of an emergency C-section, they start shaving your stomach. The second they say they're going to have a C-section, they begin to like prep your stomach for surgery with an iodine bath and shaving your stomach and laying all this stuff out you get extra IVs the anesthesiologist comes in it all happens very quickly and it can be frightening and stressful and scary so what do you do in those cases well you find yourself you center yourself you try and get calm because you don't want your blood pressure to go up and you don't want the baby's heart rate to race and cause more complications. So you get yourself calm and I went to prayer. I recited the 23rd Psalm and I just prayed that prayer even unto the point of the delivery table when they are putting in the anesthesia. The way they administer anesthesia for a C-section is through the epidural, uh, epidural space in your spine so it's a long needle you never have to see it and they put it in your spine and it literally feels like have you ever had someone thump on your funny funny bone like like that that's what it feels like they're doing to your bot your back so they kind of press in it and it's like a thump 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 and then you just kind of feel like tickly what they're doing is putting the medicine in so you kind of feel like Ooh, what is that? And that is the epidural. So once they put that in, lay you out, your husband can come in, or if you're not married and you have a, a family member, whoever is there, will come in in their scrubs and lay with you on the table, the operating table. It is a lot of people talking and you're kind of, I feel like to describe it underwater feeling where you're fully aware of everything going on, but it's like a cloud because you're strapped down and you can't move so you're powerless <laughs> and all these people are talking and performing on you so it is a little it's a little surreal now in all my three c-sections I had different experiences on each operating table I was operated at three different hospitals with three different doctors and um, each experience was different, but one thing stayed the same. Whatever my state of mind was and my partner was whatever the outcome. So the first time I was just in so much shock and so much a, a state of, is my baby gonna be okay? That I didn't even question anything. It was a survival mentality. It was get the baby out, I hope she's okay. I want to make sure she's breathing. I wasn't even thinking of myself. And my directive was always whatever is best for her. For the second child, you, I was thinking thoughts of, of the, my daughter who was in the waiting room. And I was also a little bit, I think, overwhelmed and concerned for the children that I, I wasn't thinking of myself enough. 
to the point where I allowed my consciousness to go off of myself, which resulted in me getting sick. So for the second operation, I experienced high levels of nausea during the surgery. And it was kind of traumatic to the point where they had to drug me even more to quote unquote knock me out because I was literally nauseous during the entire birth. I was aware of it. I knew what was going on, the underwater feeling, but I was vomiting. So they had to administer more drugs, the anesthesiologist, to get me through. And the third time, I didn't want to get nauseous and I was thinking about myself and I was remembering, don't get sick, stay strong, you, you can do this. And I took myself back there me mentally of the survival state, like, come on, you can do this, focus on, even though they're performing surgery, you're still delivering a baby. So you have to stay in the game and stay aware and put your mind over matter and help the baby be born and ensure your own safety. So the third time, I even told, kept saying to my husband, I refuse to get sick, I refuse to get sick, I refuse to get sick. And guess what? I didn't get sick. Part of getting sick and having them or being hysterical on the operating table will cause them to put you asleep, which will cause you to have a longer recovery or a longer time after birth to even be alert. So if at all possible, you want to take yourself there mentally so that you're present for your newborn and to experience that. Um, <clears throat> another side effect to the anesthesia, Ethan, Ethan. Shh, I'm filming a video. Another <laughs> part of having a C-section and the anesthesia for me was the itching. So during my first uh, C-section, I was so itchy that the anesthesiologist literally had to take his hand and go like this to my face. Like, I was like, oh my gosh, scratch my face. Because the anesthesia, that was the effect I was having. Um, for the second one, did I have the itching with David? I didn't have the itching with David. And that might be because they had to give me so much more medicine because of the vomiting that I didn't have the itching craziness. Now for the third one, Ethan, I was fine all the way through recovery. But as soon as the adrenaline wore off and that survival mode and the baby was fine and everything, all of a sudden, I had crazy itching fits. Like, I, they had to pump me with so much pain medicine because I was literally wanting to scratch my skin, like, raw. Like, it was insane. So, what I would suggest is those dry loofah pads um, that are in like the bathing section of your drugstore, um, the flat kind. If you're, if you can have your spouse take a loofah, one of those, so that when you're feeling itchy like that, he can rub it on you without you going insane trying to nod yourself. So that is one pointer for in the um, hospital. Okay, so you go through the surgery, the itching. All right. When you have a C-section, you may want to appoint somebody to kind of be a third party because after the C-section, you go into the recovery area where most hospitals these days do not allow anyone but your spouse or the person who was in surgery. But then you have the baby who may or may not be in recovery with you. If your delivery was normal and there was no complications, the baby will be right next to you in recovery. In the case of Ethan, they were trying to tell us that he had, what did he have, water in his lungs or breathing? Something with breathing. Something with his breathing. Although I fought it till the end. Um... No, it was his Billy Rubin. It was his Billy Rubin number they were saying wasn't correct. And I said, well, he needed to nurse and it will get normal. And they're like, no, we need to take him to the NICU. I said, let him stay with me for one hour and watch it get better. Well, it did get better, but they still took him to the nursery. 
And I'm referring to my husband because you're out of it. You're underwater feeling. So you will forget most of this. But I'm telling you this so that you feel somewhat prepared. Anyway, so the third party person is the person who will be on point to watch the baby. The way we did it, because I had had experience having C-sections, I told my husband, leave me and be with my child. And while I was in recovery, I had my cell phone. So I could call my husband from the recovery seat to hear what are they doing to him. Because we didn't want him to have a bottle. We didn't want him to have any type of of sugar sugar or x-ray and things like that without our permission and knowledge which they will do because their job as a hospital is to watch their back and do whatever they think is best for this child but you as the parents are still in charge of the care that your child receives so my husband went to be with our son in the nursery therefore leaving me alone in the recovery now for a first-time mother that can be very scary so um, in a family members case I was the person outside of the nursery watching what they did to the baby while the husband was in the recovery room with his wife so depends how you want to do it okay so when you're in the hospital during a c-section you will be having pain medicines and you'll be very groggy now one thing they want you to do is get up and walk to start feeling better i would suggest that very much because as painful as it might be walking will help you in the long run long run walking taking a shower and getting right back in the bed um i nursed my children so i feel as though that helped but the main thing during post C-section recovery, at least for the first two weeks, will be a pillow. A pillow will be your best friend. You want to guard your stomach area and your C-section scar because um, one thing you might be surprised about, they don't put like bandages over your scar. They kind of leave just some surgical tape and that's it some hospitals do staples or whatever but they leave it open because an open wound will heal faster so you don't have like like bandages you just have kind of like a scar so have a pillow constantly over you not only for your um protection but it kind of comforts that spot and you just had a baby there for so long so it will make you feel better um what else would i say post c-section another thing is since you've had oh, oh 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 they have these cuffs you know when you get your blood pressure taken in the doctor's office it's like that but they're around your ankles and that's to prevent blood clots so that's pretty annoying, especially when you're trying to rest, that all of a sudden, because they're on a timer, they'll just squeeze your legs and take like a blood pressure cuff would, but on both of your legs. So that won't be on the whole time you're in the hospital, but for at least the first 24 hours. Um, you'll have a catheter at first, and then they'll remove that. So once they remove the catheter and the cuffs and you can start walking and taking a shower, I would definitely suggest you just take your pain medicine as soon as you feel that, get up, do your walk, take a shower, get back in the bed, repeat. Um, okay. After you have your C-section, it's time to go home. By this time, you will more than likely be very swollen around your legs, ankles, and feet. All of the fluid you've been taking in through the IV will cause swelling. So I would suggest wearing a dress home so you don't have anything binding, having loose underwear around your stomach and scar, and buy flip-flops like the rubber kind that you wear in the shower or on the beach. Buy them in a shoe size bigger so that you can fit your feet in them. And if you are having a baby during the winter time, then buy the booty kind of slippers, like bedroom slippers, a size larger that you can put over your feet because your feet will swell like you couldn't even imagine. And when you get home, you'll want to keep your feet elevated and eventually they will go down. I would say it takes about two and a half, three weeks for the swelling to go down even if you're in the best of shape. 
and keep that pillow over your stomach as you go through the c-section recovery at home especially if you have other children that will want to hug you or anything like that when you nurse the baby keep the pillow over your scar things like sneezing and laughing might hurt so you want to cup yourself over and then <coughs> cough like kind of make a curved C in your back or when you want to laugh brace yourself with the pillow and then you know so <coughs> like that okay Here's the truth about working out and getting back to life. It takes longer than the six weeks that they first tell you. It takes longer than the eight weeks. You will have a false sense of, I'm all better. And if you try and work out, especially anything that gets your heart rate really pumping, you will feel dizzy. So if at all possible, start with like stationary things like stretching in the chair or maybe you have some hand weights if you're you know really desperate hand weights not too heavy do some calisthenics little little things because it is a process you just had major surgery and you just had you know labor so working out is really the last thing you should be worried about you know especially if you're nursing you want to concentrate on producing good milk and letting your scar heal it is very true that people scar open back up and then you don't want to have to go back to the hospital and leave your child at home so take care of yourself it's not all bad to be honest I've seen birth both ways and I would rather have a c-section than have a regular birth but take heed to this information and of course the advisement of your doctors and I know that you'll get through this process with fine colors because anything that has been brought to you, God has given you the strength to see it through. So I hope that this advice helps and it blesses you during this wonderful time of your life. Bye.